Ow. Look at this shit. God damn, this is the worst desert ever. Really since we got out of, got past Tahoe, we've been in like the desert. Um and we keep getting fucking rained on. This is the this desert is broken. Oh in other news, Ian's bags that have not been traveling well as it is have finally lost the fight with his exhaust. I'm not gonna be able to show you, I don't think. Uh, the fin uh, right here has finally cut through the bottom of his bag up in there. So I don't know if there's really anything we can do about that. I mean it's mostly because this rear strap is, let's see, not that one, but this one is completely failing. So, you know, our biggest fear is that it might have burned through and cut a hole in the blow-up doll, but that seems to be okay. Look at this! I'm glad it was taking me so long to get ready. Yeah, what if we fucking try to drive? I'm gonna hit by a tornado. We are in Albuquerque, New Mexico, hanging out with one of my friends who happened to live here. I thought we didn't have any friends uh, in the Southwest, but it turns out we do, mostly East Coast and West Coasters, uh, which I honestly don't blame though. I would never move to New Mexico. Honestly, I like New Mexico. Well, George also likes like places like Butte and Buffalo, so his opinion is <laughs> invalid. Well, I mean, I like this, you know, I liked Butte and Buffalo because they were trashy. This place is kind of nice. So, Ian, you want to mm -hmm. show America what you've done? Well, um, endurance cargo. Which, you know, we should probably mention, haven't really been holding up to the challenge. I have not. I mean... They're I, not sponsoring us. No, We don't owe them I'm anything. Not, I'm not going to blame them. It's just that, you know, they're universal bags on a bike, and we struck them the best way that we could, and, you know, they're still dealing poorly. Well, plastic inserts to keep them stiff and stable, and you, know, you can see where it's beginning to form because of the heat. So I was able to unroll this piece of uh, like 30 gauge steel, I guess. Duct ductwork duct steel plating. Um, hopefully, I'm gonna be able to put it in here. Uh, unfortunately, taking it out destroyed like the little sleeve, but um, I don't really care. Gosh, God damn. I feel like I'm like duct taping the edges of this. It's kind of sharp, but I feel like given enough wear. This will actually puncture the bag. <laughs> so on to more important things. Yeah. Fucking with our hosts. <laughs> Rewarding our hosts for their hospitality. Rewarding our hosts. Now, it would be easy enough to put it in his bed. I think her, uh... But it's going to be noticed when he's going to walk in stealing his bed, and it's not going to give, like, the, oh my gosh, guys, like, what's in my bed? You know, it's... So, I want it to be, like, you know, when somebody puts some water, like, across the things, and they walk in, and it, like, hits them like a ton of bricks. Stand it up. So he yeah, so like, you know, you open the door and bang. Otherwise, just a normal door. It's there. Woo! Woo! Oh my god. Where did you get this? Raleigh. They only make flat, fat girl blow up dolls in Raleigh. Well, yeah, I mean. It's good, dude. That's pretty That's hot. That's really pretty hot. Well, you know, we put it in your room for a reason. So. Yeah, well. Everybody gets a turn. This is going to the video. She's kind of hot. Not at all, though, actually. You wouldn't get up on that? Are you recording this? No. Okay. Whatever. Well, you're sleeping with her tonight, right? I thought we were tonight. Well, yeah. It's Monday, right? Yeah. You're a little sleeping? Nobody actually uses these things, right? I sure hope not. I mean, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's foul. Except for those calves, those are pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> Who designed this? So, I never thought an old college high school friend and his friend taking a homeless, jobless trip around America on a classic motorcycle would actually motivate me to keep my job. But when they described their jobs, I was just blown away by how awful it was, and despite how much I hate mine sometimes, I think I'm gonna stick with it for a little while. Um, oh, you're talking about me again? No, uh, no definitely not. Uh, what have you been up to? Nothing. <laughs> okay. So we're talking about our Yeah, you want, you want to talk about Ian and George and what you 
you thought about their visit? Well, I mean, like anybody, seeking the American dream on a motorcycle. American dream being kind of like easy rider. You know they're homeless and jobless, right? Well, yeah, it's like easy rider. It's a good one. Okay. Put it on the list. But they die in the end. You probably missed a story about 110 miles an hour across a whole state with dead forks. With what? The forks on the motorcycle were bent. Really? It crashed the bike. That's safe though. Oh, it didn't have a front brake either. Oh my god. So They have back brake though. That doesn't really do much on a motorcycle. Why? Because when you brake, it shifts all the way to the front. Yeah, it's bent. Okay, by the way, I'm, I'm Eric. I'm an engineer. Oh, really? I already know all this stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not convinced. Oh, actually. Alright, well. Yeah, so we'll, hold on, sorry. So, we'll, yeah. what was the equation for dynamic weight transfer under brake? Oh, we can talk about that another time when we're off camera. Yeah, why not right now? Hold on, I got some paper over here you can write it down. It's probably a free body there. Okay, so what do you want me to explain to you? Um, the uh, mass transfer during braking of a vehicle. Is that six fingers? That's a middle finger. One, two, three, four, five, six, six fingers. No, no, no. That's a, uh, that's a tumor. <laughs> anyway, Ian, George, great to see you. I hope you don't die. They seem like pretty cool, pretty cool guys. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't smoke all that crack here, though. Yeah. For the win, George. In gear? Yeah. Nice. Doing this every 500 miles or so. Yeah, we've put down about 400 miles so far. Yeah, not too bad. The weather's nice, so it's. We'll probably have another hour of daylight by the time we get on the road. Hopefully we can put down another 80 miles, but then, you know, be followed by another 250. But, what the fuck else are we going to do? Ian and I have had some conversations on the bikes about, like, you know, hardship. And you know, sort of like the hard, the hardship, the very you know PG thirteen hardship we're introducing into our lives with this road trip, and whether it makes you like tougher or softer, because you know after we drove a thousand miles, like we didn't want to do it again, like applying that like the macro, like you know soldiers don't come back from war and want more war, they want to relax, you know, their families in a quiet place and move on their lives. So, like what is, so we're introducing all this hardship, you know, in theory to like make us tougher, but make it tougher or softer. And I guess so the conclusion we came to is not that it makes you tougher or softer, but it shows you where your limits are. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess that's cool. You know, knowing, knowing what you're capable of and not capable of. But uh, yeah, shit, 7.30, spirits are high, a couple hundred miles to go, and um, confidence to go the distance.